I did a master's at the University of Kentucky and uh, in geography uh, and to pay for that I, ha I had to teach undergraduate courses first year undergraduate courses there was one and there was one called lands and peoples of the non-western world and it was quite a traditional geography course where um, the first you know, you, you, you do China one week and then you do Australasia the next week, then you do Latin America the next week and what have you. And you'd just be telling people about these countries and about their exports and about all sorts of kind of issues uh, one way or another. And um, the students, I don't think it was because I was a terrible teacher. I think it was because it's actually quite boring that the students were quite unengaged. And um, I struggled a lot to try and make it seem relevant to the students. It was a course that you took because you wanted to get a grade, and all the questions were about how do I get the grade, not. And so I, was, I thought to myself, I thought, what would be brilliant here is if there were some kind of examples that I could find of something that they did, something that they had in their lives that actually came from those places, so that there was a direct personal connection between their own lives or my own life as well and the people that we were talking about. And that's literally where it came from. So I just thought, well, I've got to, I, I'd love, so I, I, I um, applied to go back to the UK to do a PhD where I would do that. I would take a commodity and I would um, find out where it was uh, grown or made and then I would travel along the commodity chain uh, in order to hear the sort of human and other stories that are actually in those things, to talk to the people um, who made it, grew it, um, packed it, shipped it. Uh, and then ultimately to consume it as well. So I just wanted to find out that kind of, to think about the economy as like a social system uh, and to think of commodities as ways of connecting together uh, the lives of people who don't know anything about each other but whose lives are intimately connected on a day-by-day -day basis. Um, so that's how I got into the general sort of idea. And in the end, I ended up doing my PhD on fresh papaya, um, that were sold in the major British supermarkets and they all came from two farms in Jamaica. And I'd never eaten a papaya before and um, I, didn't really, I wasn't really that interested in them as a consumer, but what I was interested in um, was the fact that it was a very practical decision, is that I didn't speak any other languages, so I had to do some work in an English-speaking part of the world. And I decided to do something on uh, exotic fruit or tropical fruit because they were really big at the time in the early 90s that the supermarkets the fact that they could get them and that nobody could pronounce them or didn't know how to cut them up or anything like that was this big kind of issue about they've got these things isn't, isn't it amazing and thirdly I chose the papaya because it was a crop that that fruited 12 months of the year so the whole organizational thing about 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 being in the field at the right time I didn't have to base it on whether or not it was spring, summer or autumn or what have you. I could, just, I could just be there for any amount of time. So it's a completely practical decision. And so after I did that, I found that really, um, really powerful in terms of, I mean, I, I, had, I had lived quite a sheltered life, I realised. So I, I worked in, on, this, on these two farms for about nine months as an ethnographer, talking to the people who were working there, the management, the people who owned the farm. And I worked a lot in the packing house, um, just as the fruits came in, uh, kind of washing them and grading them and packing them and putting them in boxes and taking them to the airport and what have you. Um, and what was really interesting is that um, I talked to the supermarket buyers who bought them for Tesco's and Sainsbury's and um, Safeway at the time. And they would tell me what, what it was like on these farms. And then I went there for nine months and I found out what it was like on the farms. And you realise the importance of the audit and the visit from the buyers, you know, that they're coming along and everyone knows they're coming and everyone, gets a, everyone got a really new T-shirt with the, with the farm logo on it that they wore that one day. And then the, the people who worked on the farm would then keep that T-shirt because it was, the most, it, was the, it, it was the most, it was the newest item of clothing that they had and they would wear it on special occasions. And then they'd go back to wearing their... Uh, you know, their everyday clothes. So it was a real shocking kind of like the poverty and the, the historical um, um, uh, remnants of the kind of uh, sugar-based slavery society. The, the, the farm had this ruined sugar factory in the, right in the middle of it and we would go and sit and have our lunch kind of like sit on the wall of the, of the, of the pond that was used for making rum kind of thing. It was all in ruins so the whole connection between the past and the present was, you know, it was mind-boggling. And also the connection between the here and the there was also, you know, all very mind-boggling. <laughs> so um, after that, though, um, I got concerned that I, I wasn't challenging myself because I'd done research on something that I didn't eat and I didn't care about and didn't really matter to me. So one of the more recent things that I've decided to do, which I think is quite important for me, is to um, research medicine 
it's quite an un, uh, in terms of ethical consumption, medicine is just kind of something that doesn't even doesn't tend to come into the picture at all, unless you know otherwise. But it, and it, this is the idea that I, I did started doing some research um, on steroids. Uh, I had to take I, I've got an Ill, I've got a, an illness that means I have to take steroids every day, and so I thought this is a completely different type of consumption. I mean, I need this to be me, and it's sort of this commodity isn't something I've chosen from a supermarket shelf. I've been told that if I don't take it, I can't be physically and you know I can't be myself in a strange way so the commodity kind of in a way it doesn't exactly choose me but it slots in and allows me to be the person I was before I was ill so I got really really interested in that kind of thing and about the in terms of the ethical kind of considerations the question is you know well if I need this there isn't any other alternative there's no herbal alternative there's no organic alternative no fair trade alternative there's just what I get prescribed uh, so what do you then think if you found out uh, things about this commodity that you didn't like that made you uncomfortable? What does that do to your sense of who you are and what you might do as a consumer? And with those kinds of, uh, with those kinds of commodities, you can't say, well, I'll just buy a different one or I won't buy it at all. You, know, you don't have those choices at all. You have to think about how you might act in a very, very different kind of way.